friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams for another Vlogmas video. Today we're going to be doing a shelf spotlight. And since the weather is getting colder and many of us have snow on the ground, today we're going to talk about some winter book recommendations. I have here quite a few books that I think would be fantastic reads for the winter time. Many of which obviously have like snow on the cover or snow as a theme or snow in the title or winter in the title, but some others that don't. So I'm just going to jump right in and get going with some wintry books that I think would make fantastic reads for this season. I'm not always a seasonal reader, but sometimes I, I do like to read wintry books in the winter. It just makes sense to me. Um, the first series that I'm going to talk about, I have a couple series here. I'll do those first. The first one is a mystery series, and it is the Armand Gamache mystery series by Louise Penny. The first book is Still Life. And the second book is A Fatal Grace. And that's as far as I've read so far in the series. I don't think Still Life takes place in the winter. I think it's more of a fall book, but A Fatal Grace takes place in the winter. But the reason that I'm picking these is because there's like 13 or 14 books in the series, maybe more than that, 15, 16, I don't know. <laughs> I'm slowly collecting them, but I'm only on book three. But these books are not quite cozy mysteries, but they are mysteries. We do have a um, an inspector that is involved in solving the mystery, but also the townspeople are very involved. We, these books take place in a small town in Canada called Three Pines. Um, it's in Montreal. The, the characters in this book are just so endearing and it's almost a cozy because characters are very involved with helping to solve the crime and also because the same characters go all the way through the series. You really get to know them and this town is just so cozy and you just learn to love all of the different people in the town. And I'm really excited to continue with this mystery series. And if you're participating in A Cloak and Dagger Christmas, which is a mystery readathon that happens all of the month of December, these might be a good one to pick up. They're relatively quick reads. They're fantastic on audiobook. I've listened to Still Life on audio. My mom is on book three or four and she's listened to all of them on audio and loves it. Um, but yeah, so this would be a great winter series to read. Another series that's totally different from those that I think would be fun to read in the winter, and maybe it's because I read them in the winter, but it's The Lunar Chronicles by uh, Marissa Meyer. We have Cinder, Scarlet, Cress, uh, Winter, and Ferris and Stars Above. Ferris and Stars Above are kind of short stories and novellas that go along with the four book series. These are fairy tale retellings, and I think fairy tale retellings are fantastic to read in the winter time. So this one, we follow Cinder, who is a cyborg and is kind of like the story of Cinderella. The characters in this are very fun. It's a very quick, fast-paced YA. I should say that. It's a YA series. And uh, very much talked about three, or four, three years ago, four years ago, when I first started booktube. I haven't heard people talking about them lately. So if you haven't ever picked these up, this is a book, obviously, um, this is a book I would not have picked up because of the cover. Um, it's very like sci-fi. You can see kind of the metal machinery inside of the ankle, but I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that I looked past the cover and um, I should have used this for Don't Judge a Book by Its Cover earlier this month. But um, yeah, this is a fantastic series and I think it would be a, a happy, fun, quick read to enjoy and to kind of dive into those books in the wintertime. Another series that I'm going to talk about, I am doing a read-along that starts in January. Um, so I'm going to talk about The Hobbit, and this is the first one. It's not part of The Lord of the Rings, but it's in the same world as The Lord of the Rings in Middle-earth, and this is by J.R.R. Tolkien. In this book, we follow a hobbit named Bilbo Baggins, and he has been sent on a mission by the wizard Gandalf to raid the treasure of the dragon Smog. Um, I think this is a fun world to kind of dive into, a nice fantasy world, pretty developed fantasy world that you can dive into in those cold wintry months. And if you do decide to pick up The Hobbit, join us in January, join Sarah and I from Sarah's Nightstand for Lord of the Read Along. We're starting with this one in January. So shameless plug there for that. Another book that kind of has some fairy tale elements to it is Another Middle Grade, and it is Echo by... Pam Munoz Ryan. I think fairy tale retellings and historical fiction are two of my favorite things to read in the winter. And this has both. So in this book, it starts out with kind of this fairy tale, these sisters 
um, who, and we kind of learn a little bit of their story, but in this book there's this harmonica that's somewhat magical, and this harmonica enters the lives of three different children. One of them is a Jewish boy in Germany, one of them is these brothers who live in Pennsylvania and are entering the foster care system, and the third is a little girl. Her family are Mexican migrant workers, and she is good friends with a neighbor who has been sent to a Japanese internment camp. So this all happens with the backdrop of World War II, um, but we have this fairy tale element that runs through in historical fiction. Fantastic read. It is quite a chunker, but it is so fast. Um, and again, the audiobook would be a fantastic choice for this one, but I just think that this would be a really nice read for wintertime. Kind of get cozy up and settle down with that one. I'm going to talk about two books from Susanna Kearsley, The Winter Sea and Named of the Dragon. Both of these do take place in the wintertime. Both of these have some element of historical a historical element to them. In the Winter Sea, um, we follow an author who is writing about the Jacobite Rebellion in Scotland, and so she moves to Scotland while she's writing, and it's very atmospheric and cold and blustery, perfect for wintertime, um, and she ends up having memories of one of her characters that she's writing about. So there's the little time travel -y type of twist that happens there. And then Named of the Dragon does happen in the holiday season. This one is not so um, time travel. This one doesn't have as much of a historical or time travel element, but it does have a very gothic, dark, blustery feel to it um, as she stays on, um, in Wales. And this one, this one takes place in Wales in the wintertime. Also involves a lot of literary characters, some writers and an agent. Um, they're all in this one. So both of these are very good. I love Susanna Kearsley. She's fantastic to read in the winter time. A book that I read last winter is The Snow Child by Eowyn Ivy, and this is so beautiful. Uh, in this book, we follow this old elderly couple who moves to Alaska to kind of start over. They have been unable to, they're not elderly. They're older. They're not elderly, but they're older and they have been unable to have children. And it's been a um, really tough, thing for them to walk through and so they kind of move to Alaska to start fresh as just the two of them. Their relationship is just really difficult at the beginning. They have these moments though that are so beautiful and during one of these moments they build a snowman outside, a snow child I should say, and the next day the snow child is gone and they discover this little girl in the woods outside of their house. So it takes place in Alaska. It's very cold. Um, their relationship, their, like, the, the interaction between the characters is very cold as well, but there are these moments that are just so heartwarming and beautiful. I absolutely loved it. Love, love, love. Speaking of Alaska, do, can you guess what I'm going to say next? The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. If you've not yet read this yet, I highly recommend it. This one is so sad as well. Also involves a family moving to Alaska to kind of start over. The father is a Vietnam vet and is kind of abusive to his wife and just this awful guy at, at times but is hoping that moving to Alaska will kind of give them the fresh start that they need as a family. Um, so we follow the husband and wife and the young girl whose name Lenny who's 13 when they move to Alaska. So we kind of see them they move in the summertime and they have to immediately start preparing for winter because winters in Alaska last forever. Um, <laughs> And, and then we do get into the winter time where there's just, a, there, you're isolated because you can't travel around that much. Um, you're kind of stuck inside your house because it's dark and snowy and blustery and we follow this family and, and um, the interactions that they have with the people in the little town that they move to in Alaska. Very gripping, very heart-wrenching, uh, frustrating at times. Um, but I absolutely loved it. Kristen Hanna is such a good storyteller in my book. I just really love the way she tells a good story. Another book where the setting is almost its own character is Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. In this book we are in Iceland and we follow the last, the case of the last person who um, was sentenced to the death penalty, um, Agnes. And so um, we, we just follow Agnes and she is kind of has to live in this home of the family until the time of her, her punishment, her de until the time of her death. Um, so we follow this this family's reaction to having this woman staying with them, and we kind of learn about why she's been a, what crime she's been accused of, and did she really do it, and why did she do it, and 
all of that. And they're in Iceland and it's very cold and very icy and very, again, isolated because of that cold. Uh, yeah, definitely a winter book. <laughs> definitely one to read in the winter time. Another kind of fairy tale feel book to read in the wintertime is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This one takes place in a Russian setting, also very cold and snowy. Um, and this one has a little magical element to it. In this village outside, like way in the woods in Russia, um, the, there's a lot of superstition and a lot of belief in these, like almost like a house elf, um, these spirits that kind of live in the houses. Um, and some people are really against that and some people really believe in it. Um, and this one young girl that we follow, I forget her name, v Vasilisa. Uh, Vasilisa is one who can communicate with these spirits. Um, and it's this there, yeah, there's a definite fairy tale vibe to this. It's pretty dark at times, um, but I absolutely loved it. And I'm looking forward to reading the sequel to this one this year in the winter time, hopefully. Just a couple more. Um, another Kristen Hanna that is a historical fiction that also takes place in Russia, or the historical part takes place in Russia, is Winter Garden. Um, and in this one we follow um, a mother who's sick and her two daughters. Um, the father has passed away and his kind of dying wish was that the two girls do their best to connect with their mother. And so the mother tells her story in, in this book. And part of her story involves the siege at Leningrad, which happened during the World War II time period. Um, so we do hear about a lot about what that was like. And I did not know some of that stuff. Um, and it was, I remember bawling. I remember crying very hard. Kristen Hanna always has a way of getting straight to my heart. But yeah, this I think would be a fantastic, another historical kind of historical with contemporary elements as well. We have that dual timeline kind of a thing going on. So I really enjoy this one. And a straight contemporary without any historical elements that I think you should read if you haven't already is Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. This is so good. This one takes place in Sweden and it happens in Bear Town, this town that is very focused on hockey. Everybody, almost practically everybody in the town is involved in some way with the hockey team, whether they have children that play on the team or they're involved with the business of the hockey rink or they are just mega fans. <laughs> Everybody's involved with hockey. Uh, it does take place in the winter time. And the main plot line in this is that one of the best players on the hockey team sexually assaults one of the girls in town whose dad happens to run the hockey rink. Um, and the town is kind of divided as to who they're going to believe or support in, in this situation. And it's awful. And yet, so believable and sad and I don't know it just is so good Frederick Bachman has a usually his characters are so quirky and I like that about them these ones are not as much quirky but there's he really blurs the line between good and evil like not good and evil but there's not just a good character and a bad character there's all kinds of nuance and depth to his characters that he writes and I really really like that and I love so many of the zingers he has these one line quotable moments that are just so good and he makes you think and he leaves you hanging at the end of every chapter i really really like his writing and i really like this book so good the last book that i'm going to talk about is kind of more christmassy because it's mr dickens and his carol uh, by samantha silva and this is kind of a backstory imagining of what um, how Mr. How Charles Dickens wrote The Christmas Carol, which is such a, a famous and popular book to read at Christmas time. So I thought this would be a good one to read in the winter as well. If you have read The Christmas Carol before or if you're reading it this year, it might be kind of fun to read a story that kind of talks about the backstory. Yeah, it just was interesting. Um, you see a lot of parallels of what's happening in um, Ebenezer Scrooge in The Christmas Carol to things that happen to Charles Dickens himself in this story. I don't know like the factuality, like how much of this is accurate to really what happened and really how he wrote the book, but I thought it was a lot of fun and a good companion to read along with The Christmas Carol. So there you have about 14 books that I think you should read in the winter and some of them are series and I didn't hold up the whole series so there's even more than that. 
I would love to hear from you down below. Have you read any of these? Are you planning on reading any of them this winter? What books do you think would make for good winter reads? I would love more wintery recommendations in the comments down below and then we can all kind of look at them and maybe make some additions to our own TBRs for this winter. Let's chat down in the comments below about these books, about your recommendations, or about anything else. You guys know I love talking with you down in the comments and I will be seeing you tomorrow with another Vlogmas video. Bye!